So, hello there. Uh, I want to show you quick how to edit GoPro 5.3K footage, how to edit that on the Mac. And um, on the Mac is good, on Final Cut Pro, right? So this is the software Final Cut Pro. And I have here a library that is called iMac. And that exists on my iMac. And so I'm going to show this here on an iMac, basically, okay? So first of all, we need to, f to create a new event. They call this event. An event that contains all the projects and videos that go around one event. And my event now is that I took a few clips with a GoPro Hero. And now I have a GoPro Hero card and I want to... Um, make like a video out of it okay so I need to create a new event and we go in here and say new event and then we specify the event size and since I said we want to um, work with a GoPro hero um, event let me check quick here the node I have here we want to do a GoPro hero event in 5.3k and uh, in order to do this, we need to know uh, 5K or set the video to 5K. Now, we don't have to uh, we have we don't have to do this now. We can do this later. We just set the event file size here, and um, so we have an event name, and let's call this uh, GoPro edit in FCPX, like Final Cut Pro X. And um, so we create a new project in there and then we do a 5K, this is 5120 by 2160. There is more resolutions of this uh, 5K in here, right? So the closest, the closest that comes to to the camera would be this the 5120 times 2700 and um, the fastest we can go would be the 60 frames per second here the 59.94 okay um, this is still smaller than the camera is recording so if we want to go the actual number that the camera has we can enter this here by going to custom and then in custom we can enter the actual 5312 by 2988 pixels that what the GoPro spits out at that size okay let's just do this now we can pick a, a speed here we can go 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second and so if we want to upload this to um, YouTube Right now, we would go around six, uh, 30 frames a second, or here the American NTSC value, the 29.97. So let's leave it like this. We can do the 60 frames per second if we want to. But uh, let's go here, okay? So now we get a new event that's here. This is the new event, and it contains one project. And this project, if we look over to the right, uh, we'll have those project settings, the 5312 by 2988 pixels with 30 frames per second and uh, 48 kilohertz stereo sound. Um, that's what a new project will have. And now we all we need to do now is to import footage into our event. Right? We don't import it into the project, we import it into the event. And that's easily done by either connecting the camera to the computer or inserting the camera SD card into the computer. And uh, once we do that, we get a pop-up. And this pop-up here is helping us with the import of the stuff, okay? So the camera name is untitled, or the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the... Uh, camera itself or whatever the SD card in the camera and we do have here one two three four five clips in here with the clip name down here 
and then the time, how long those clips are, 23, 15, 38, 23, and 47 seconds. And if we want all of them imported, we could say here, import all. But first, we have to check where we import this to. We can see here, add to existing event. That's uh, not right. The existing event name is not early issue. That is another event. We want to go to GoPro edit, right? So we check out here on the iMac the GoPro Edit and Final Cut Pro X event. That's the event that we uh, copy to the library. If we have our um, files on an SSD drive, for example, we would not copy it there. We just would leave it in place and work on that external SSD drive and, and would make our edits there. We don't even copy to the computer. We just stay on the external drive. So and then there is another whole kind of things where you can scan this for people uh, like face recognition, you know, those kind of things where you can balance the color before you import it and everything. So we just leave this all off and just import those files straight here to the computer. Now, in my case now, it may be a little slower than it is in reality because I am screen recording this, but we can see here in our import clips that there is little timers going, like this one now is completely imported, this one is going to import, and then there is the last one. We have also an overall timer up here, if we click on that, we can see the background tasks that are running right now, and that would be the import. Now, the import is done means I get a reminder here, I cannot move this over, but I get an import complete uh, notification. What is not visible on your screen in the moment, but I have it here on the part of my screen. And then you can disconnect your camera or the camera SD card and put that back where it came from. I just put this thing back into the uh, camera. Now, in case I mess up my files, what usually does not happen, but if I would have deleted my files now from the computer, I would still have the backup on the camera for later if I have to go in there. So now my project here is the project with this project um, data for my export later. This is what I want to export, okay? So we uh, agreed on 30 frames a second in this original 5K format for uh, GoPro, right? If we want to change that to something else, you can go to modify and then change everything we want in here. We can do a different uh, size, 8K or whatever, and 60 frames a second, whatever we need, okay? So just leave this as it is. Um, here we can do uh, FCPX demo iMac and GoPro 5.3K, okay? So this project is going to be 5.3K. All right, so now our uh, footage clips we have imported are here, five of them. And if we click on one of them, we can, first of all, preview here. If we hit the space bar, we can play it. Edit. Go so it goes in there. Right? And we can see here on the right, if we click the information button, what kind of footage this is, okay? The codex it uses. So it's this HEVC footage. Uh, it doesn't have a camera name here because this camera doesn't write the name into the video uh, metadata. So if the camera would be able to write metadata to the videos it produces, you would see the camera name here. Like if you buy an expensive, good camera, then you would see the name of the camera here. But you can rename your camera to whatever you want, right? So if you have a multi-camera situation where you have more than one camera, like three GoPros, you could select all the imports you have here and uh, give the camera a name here, Hero 10. And if you uh, recorded some other footage with something else, then you could see and, and, and change it there if you want that later. Okay, so um, here we see like this footage has the 5K with uh, 23 so 24 frames a second. Here we have 60 frames a second. There we have 60 frames a second. 
here we have 60 frames a second. But it's not true. Because we do know that we did a 240 frames a second super slow motion thing. So this should be 240. And I don't know why it displays wrong. You know, it could be a 60 real, 60 real frames. I don't know. So, um, but what we see here is this little extra. In the clip itself, it has this little extra thing that shows us that, that this clip is a slow motion clip, a high frame rate clip that was recorded for slow motion, right? And then here we have a regular 1080 but 60 frames a second clip that has a lower resolution. Now, we can add all of them at once to our timeline. Our timeline is down here, and we have transitions here. Let's turn this off. So here's our timeline. The playhead will go from left to right to play whatever we put there. We can either drag manually a piece of the video. So what you, what you usually do is you click through here and say, hey, I want from here. I want from here or here. So what you, where you go is you go here, then you start playing. So we do you have say, here, wow. here, So this is my endpoint. You would push the I button on the keyboard, and then this um, um, rectangle here would uh, adjust to that. 40 frames a second, super slow motion. So there you see I. Uh, it starts right. So I'm going to go back here. So there, maybe, and say e, I for insert, and then I go play and say that's where it is, O for uh, out, in and out, and now I have this little yellowish marked area. I can push the E button to copy this here to the timeline, and in the timeline it's very small because it has um, 60 frames, it has 240 frames per second. If I want to play this now in uh, 30 frames per second, I would slow this down here. I would say, like, okay, give me only 10% of this, and then my clip would be longer. If I then play this here, it would be slow motion. You see the dog run the dog in slow motion. Now, with the noise and the audio, if you want it like this, you can leave it, right? Or change the volume, whatever you want. So this is the slow motion clip. Let's go with this one here, the first one. It has 24 frames a second, right? So I can drag the whole thing down here. And now it has to be retimed because it has or was only recorded with 24 frames per second. It will make it 30 frames per second because our project has 30. So we can play this here. And maybe we see later issues with that, that it doesn't uh, do 60 frames. This one, on the other hand, has 60 frames. I can drag this here. This is also 60 frames, the second uh, video here. Um, this was our slow motion clip. We didn't need all of it. And then this is the 1080p thing. So if we click this on here, then it will upscale it. It will go from 1080 to 5.3K and upscale this video. And I don't know then if you would notice a difference between those two footage pieces. Possible. If we need to duplicate our video, let's say this one, for example, duplicate over on top of the other. Here, now the 1080p video is on top of the 5.3 video. If we need to shorten this up to the same length as the video underneath, we can now go in here and check the fit, how it fits. Here, the spatial conform. At the moment, it's upscaled to fit the same screen, but if we say no here, it will stay at the regular size. So we do have here a 1080 video on top of a 5.3K video. So that means this is how much bigger this is in comparison. We can now, since this is selected, move this video around. If we want to, we can click here and transform. And then move this section to wherever we like. So let's see, we like it here as an example. Is that good there? Maybe it is. And now we can say, hey, uh, yeah. it's there, but it's hard to distinguish the area around it. We can put a black area behind it, for example. We can go here to Title, 
either backgrounds or uh, solids, solid areas. So we can do our custom solid area. We can take any color we want. Put this underneath and make it the same length as the video on top here. That's what that is. We also want to change our color for this to, let's say, orange. Now we have an orange background. Then we can go here to the crop section and just crop this background to whatever area we want. Now, for this recording or for your screen size, this whole view here is scaled to fit this little small screen. If you go to 100% and drag this little red area around in this window screen, then we can go in here and really very, very accurately adjust our frame here to where we exactly want this in a 100% screen situation. Then we can go back here to fit. There we have it. So if we play here this video, looks like here, we will see both. Another so here we have it. The only problem is that we have the sound of both. And we don't want both the sound of both because I say one thing in this video and another there. So you saw how I dragged the volume of this video down. And then we don't hear anything there. So now our 5.3K video is done here. Um, if you want to know how to put in a title, for example, we go here and have all kinds of titles. For example, the SVM titles number two, they were free, I downloaded from the internet. Um, I can drag this over here. And then I have my title here, right? Triple click. We'll select all of it. Final Cut Pro X. That's the title here. And then here, triple click on the lower text. Then I can edit there. How to edit GoPro footage. You can see this, how this is all weird now in the title. Um, all that can be fixed in here. So we have here a length of the those bars, and then the Final Cut Pro X here. You can make them thicker too. However thick we want this, and then where is the Final Cut Pro? Here is the size one eighty. We can make this bigger. There, we have a position here. Can position this down like this. So there's a lot of buttons in those titles, especially the ones that you make yourself. But this is not what this video is about. So this video is so quick about. And um, when we go back here, we can go step by step. Then we see that the line here has this color orange. If you don't like it and say hey I don't want this arch I want the same as the background from before you can use this eyedropper click on here and then those colors change to that same color if you have your own yeah okay so but this is like a title right um, what else call outs they have call outs here yeah? a whole bunch right For that, I don't know where you would make a call out. Maybe here. So let's say we want to call out the gas can here, right? So we take a call out for the gas can. Here, this one, right? Put this here over the thing. And let's see how this looks like. like so this. here we have a 1080p clip. Clip with 60 frames a second. This is short, right? But okay, so we would go here, and uh, first of all, with this ring here, we would make the size of the callout smaller. 
and then we would take our whole call out over here there let's see how that goes so now our call out is coming here there so here we have a 1080p clip see that it's going to 60 out. frames a second so we need it longer 60 frames 1080 lucy come come so otherwise we can't see right we want to take it this long and then what I want to do is I want to cut up the uh, footage underneath here and then uh, the video footage underneath that contains the gas canister here. I want to uh, add um, a tracker here, add a tracker and I want the tracker to be analyzed by machine learning and I'm going to go over this gas can and then I'm going to have this guy track the gas can here and say analyze and now uh, the tracker is going to analyze the gas can there, the table and if I go back to my call out here I put my call out right over the gas can and then I can go in here to transform and say, hey, use this tracker, the object tracker we just tracked there. And done. And now if I play this, my track should be right on this gas can. So here we and have even a though I'm moving the clip. camera, it will stay on 60 it. Frames. Now I can uh, add this here. Gas can. Leaf blower. There was a Ryobi leaf blower. So as an example, right? So that's the text I text here. Have we watch this. There so here we have a 1080p clip with 60 frames a second. 60 frames, 1080. Lucy, come, come, come on. Well, she doesn't listen. So okay. But uh, I don't know what more we can do here. We can uh, add here in between those two. We could add it. We can make this shorter and make a, a thing in here. You can do shorten this up too and put a transition in here. There is transitions. There's a lot of transitions. Blues, dissolves, lights, lens flare, light noise, static. Swipes. I mean, there's so many, it's not. Uh, I don't know. Do I have my own here? <laughs> Stylized, what is that? Slide in our color panels. Pen far right. Okay, let's do that. And put this in here, okay? Now, this is a very wild transition that has six of those drop zone spots. So there is six pictures from other things in here, and it just grabs it from all over the place. So we can drag this through our whole video. One here, one there. And, and you can grab really wherever you want. So those pictures then are coming from those other spots and those videos, okay? And then when you play this transition, it's going slow there. Yeah, and then clip with a 5.3K. This is like a super fast transition, but you can make the transition longer, right? So spread it out like more seconds, right? And then this whole thing is slower. Yeah, we have a clip. With a 5.3k. So now you have like a complex transition in 5.3k. This is like a two minute video now, right? Okay, so now if you need a thumbnail for your uh, video you want to put on, on YouTube or whatever, you can go here with your cursor to whatever spot you want to go to. So if you think that this is good, where the foot is 
breaking off like this. Right. If you think this is a great thumbnail you can work later with, you can do that. And then you would say file uh, share. We need to wait now for um, my external drives to wake up. So I was working on uh, on the computer itself. It has external drives attached and that when those went to sleep because I didn't use them. Right? It saves energy there. So uh, save the current frame. And we just save this thing. Again, we have a wait here because that drive is asleep. The drive I usually access here. There it is. And so I just uh, push this into my folder where I have converted uh, uh, videos. And um, I get a notification already that that picture is ready and we take a look at it in a second. And then uh, we can go back here to our project. This is our project. And we want to... Uh, like export this to uh, share here YouTube H264 34 megabit and we share this basically in the same folder we see it's 581 uh, 581 megabytes for this two minute movie that's just how this is. It's a lot of data uh, for it. Now, up here, we can see our uh, progress. So it's writing to the hard drive, this 5.3K uh, footage. Because I'm screen recording, this is slower than it has to be. Um, if your computer has uh, the M1 chip, it will be way faster than this. So those new cheap iMacs, the M1s, will do well on this. And I'm going to open here my window where I see this one here. This was the still picture we made. So I'm going to open this with Affinity Photo. That is the response to Photoshop, if you don't like Adobe and uh, close this and so there is my uh, 4k or 5.3k preview of my thumbnail and now I could uh, add stuff there I don't know if I have yeah I have this here let me uh, make this window smaller so that's not in the way I have here all kinds of icons in here you see all those kind of things 5K Ultra HD. So if I want this in here, I can put that there. Um, here I can use those arrows I always use. I can use my skunk if I need to. A little big, huh? Here my logo. And me if I want. So now I have a lot of... Uh, stuff in here for my uh, for my thumbnail here. You click here on this arrow and then I can move those things around. So if the skunk is too big I can move that here. Maybe the skunk is going this way. How big would the skunk be like this? Okay, there. The arrow. Five K HD. We need a few more. Or did he or she come down here? Yeah. 
I mean, you can't do whatever you want here. And then text. This tool has text too. It's like Photoshop. It doesn't. So do we do wow? We want white color here. Yeah? We want Arial Black, 288 by size Arial Black, okay. Is this good enough? This vowel could be way bigger, right? When we type in 500, twice as big. So we have this here, the vowel, right, in the text, there. We can go to special effects there and say we want an outline for this one. The larger radius there. See, we have a black outline. We can have an outer shadow with a big offset here. Do we want that? Like that, okay. And there we have our composition for our thumbnail. Now, this is way too big. Let's resize this document. So it's 5,000, so 5.3K, right? So we need 1920 for our uh, preview picture. We say resize. And then we just export this 50% to our desktop. Right? I put it on the desktop, so then I find it later if I want to plug it into YouTube. So we don't save this. Here's the picture I just did on the desktop. Make it a little smaller. So this is going to be our thumbnail for our video. And uh, if I wake up my final cut, we can see where it is. Um, as I said, so this is slow because I'm recording. Mm. Plus I have 5.3K and I don't have this HEVC chip in this computer. So on an M1 this thing is done in two minutes. Um, here on this one it takes a little longer. Plus I'm constantly writing with 60 frames a second my screenshot here. So that is going to slow this down. But So once this is done, it will pop up a message and say it's done. And I'm going to upload this with this video here. And I hope you enjoyed this little short thing. I don't know how short it was. Probably way too long. And uh, I see you uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching.